Hi, this is Emily. Thank you for taking the time to peruse and explore my online educator ePortfolio. And if you're on this page, you're likely taking a look at a course I'm developing, which is a literary themes, elements, and analysis of classic children's literature um, for the undergraduate English major student. And I recently have uh, begun working on my capstone project for my master's degree in English, which has a focus on not only the proposal for the development of this course, but also the research and evidence and purpose behind the need for such a course in the undergraduate curriculum. So what is the problem here? The problem is, in my opinion and from my research, that undergraduate English degrees or English literature degrees do not require a course in children's literature. And it is my belief that this is a problem because of the fact that Children's literature makes up such a large part of literary history, as well as such a large part of modern books, modern day book selling, book writing, all the movies being made from children's books. And if the goal of an English literature degree for a college student is to have a well-rounded education in the, in the literary field, why then is this whole entire genre cut out of it? Oftentimes, if, if the children's literature course is even offered, it's an elective, not a requirement. I propose and move toward the, the undergraduate English degree absolutely requiring a course in children's literature. I actually started my undergraduate career doing English literature. I did four years at the University of Oregon and, in literature, and I... I eventually moved into criminology and things like that. I started writing crime drama books. But really, I, I noticed then that this is a problem. And I did a little research uh, just recently for my project. I studied five schools, maybe six, Grand Canyon University, Portland State University, uh, University of California at um, uh, Los Angeles, Cal State Fullerton. I looked at Harvard. I looked at um, ITT Tech. I looked at a few places that have undergraduate bachelor's degree in English. And I have noticed in all of them, they all are very similar. They require courses in American literature, English or British literature, world literature, generally one sort of cultural um, literary focus course such as women's study, women's literature, African-American and literature, Native American literature. And often there is the, the, the novel or the novel and its traditions or maybe a, a focus on a single author, one single author course or a Shakespeare course and often a literary analysis course and then everything else is elective and this is very common and so the problem i believe is that english undergraduate students or those pursuing a literary literature type of degree are not getting a full education because children's literature makes up such a huge part of literature and it also offers this sort of smorgasbord of opportunity for a literature student to practice um, learning literary devices learning how to an analyze literature and if you if you're looking at more classic uh vintage source era children's text from the 1700s and 1800s literature then is the equivalent of what an adult would read now reading dickens or something to that effect so children these days could not even read literature now that was written back then maybe high school or adult whereas the six or seven year old child was likely reading things like the water babies or some of the really earlier earlier complicated texts and i'd like to quote from the norton anthology of children's literature in the past 30 years as literary canons have dramatically expanded the study of children's literature has gradually established itself as a vital and central field of literary and cultural research and study so I believe that a lot of schools are overlooking the fact that an undergraduate English student um, with an English degree major will maybe want to go into graduate school or get a PhD. And children's literature is an entire field that is open to them that they often think is sort of detached from them. They don't see it as an option. They don't understand that it's an equally open opportunity as going into other fields that involve English or books if they're book lovers. Um, you know, we have as far as careers in the children's children's literature market, we have ch publishing houses that publish children's literature. We have marketing companies that market children's literature. We have literary agents that only focus on children's literature. 
We have illustrators who only illustrate for children's literature, uh, children's literature authors and writers, and children's literature magazine editors and writers and staff. And of course, let's not forget the field of education with thousands and thousands and thousands of elementary schools with literature programs and teachers needed to teach English in the middle school and the high school level that need to teach about children's books and liter literacy programs where they need people to lead these literacy programs in schools. So children's literature is a very important field and it's not just something limited to teachers. It's, it's, it's something that's open to all English literature majors that they often are not aware of. So before they can sort of pick the path they want to take with their career when they get their literature or English degree, they should know about all of their options in the modern current working world. So that's one good, good evidence, um, in my opinion. And children's literature is, is, is imagined by adults, written by adults, edited, proofread, printed and published by adults, it's marketed and sold by adults, it's taught by adults, and it's shopped for or purchased by adults. So the adult involvement in children's literature is already a much higher percentage than the children's involvement themselves. And it is an adult-centered world already, the whole field of children's literature. So there's absolutely no reason that universities should not require an English degree to have a course in children's literature for that purpose as another reason. And children's literature um, often is written, uh, the stories, novels, short stories, fantasy, fairy tale, the longer novels, books such as Harry Potter, they often exist in alternate worlds, um, you know, sort of the, the, through the looking glass or the Neverland kind of a concept where the, the, the writing is, it's a, a, children's literature is really a brilliant method for students to study writing technique as well because of they can learn about things like uh, imagery the use of imagery has to be very strong in children's literature because of the fact it has to en engage the child reader who has a short attention span so you, you you know students of literature can study symbolism very 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 easily the literary elements and devices such as uh, the motif uh, characterization setting uh, personification all of the things uh, you know the anthropomorphism like the animals having human qualities. So all of these literary terms that English students learn, would they would see the connections, I think, more clearly by studying and analyzing children's literature. And I think children's literature writers have to work a lot harder because you have to fit uh, the, a big story that is incredibly engaging and intriguing into a, a much shorter space, into fewer words, and you can't use bigger, a lot of you know, more elaborate words. So it's actually a very, very detailed skill. And and I think it's a great opportunity for studying writing. And I also think that there's a good opportunity for studying history through children's literature. Because if you're studying text from the 16 and 17 and 1800s, if you're studying studying vintage texts or old texts in the children's literature era back then and its development. You learn a lot about in the text about the time period in which they were written. And you can really study the developing mind of a child compared to associating it to the context uh, within the time it was written versus we write books now that are meant to entertain. We wrote back books, like I said, in the uh, 1700s to teach about God and morality and how to behave. And uh, of course, there's the whole golden age in children's literature, which was just this beautifully expanding time when borders were breached and um, new techniques were introduced. So children's literature is definitely a field that adult undergraduate English students should be required to study just as equally, in my opinion, as English, um, British, American, Russian, world, or women's study type literature. And I also quote from the Norton Anthology, of children's literature here. I wanted to share with you some very brilliant insight. It is our firm belief that including children's literature with an introduction to literature courses or within courses that deal with the teaching of critical reading methods and literary theory or analysis will transform the survey course and revolutionize the undergraduate curriculum. Fortunately, 21st century literature departments and undergraduate students have come to realize the full significance of children's literature in some cases, though this realization has not been completely related to the practice of studying such literature in the college classroom. 
Many survey courses that deal with the introduction to literature have been adapted over the years to reflect changing ideas about the canon and literary history, now routinely presenting new theories and concepts such as women of color. Even the category of literature itself has expanded, so why not include children's literature as an equally important place in literary history for study? So I would really encourage you to let this course, this elements, themes, and analysis of classic children's literature become a part of your undergraduate curriculum and allow your literature students to really see what avenues they have as a very neglected and often ignored field in the literary world. Thank you for watching.